Hello and welcome to our course on Visio 2013. My name is Toby and I'm your instructor on this course. In this first introductory section I'm going to cover some very important aspects of the course. I'm going to talk a little bit about Visio itself, what it is and what it does, and about the editions of Visio that are available. But I'm also going to talk in particular about the structure of this course who the course is aimed at and so on. I won't actually be using Visio in this section but I do think that the content of this section is very important even if you've used Visio before. So let me start by talking a little about what Visio is. It started out as a tool for drawing pretty straightforward diagrams. The earliest versions you could draw something like a flowchart or perhaps an organization chart. And in many ways these are the kinds of diagrams that Visio is still used for every day by thousands of users around the world. But over recent versions in particular its use has become much more extensive as a visualization tool and as a means of integrating with and assisting other types of work, particularly using other components of the Microsoft Office suite. So for example you can use Visio to define workflows and you can then integrate these with Microsoft SharePoint. Now in Visio 2013 in particular many of these integration capabilities have been extended quite considerably and even if you've used a version of Visio as recent as Visio 2010 the changes in Visio 2013 are really quite considerable in terms of its capabilities. Now a good source for much of the information that you're going to need early on with Visio is Microsoft.com itself. And you'll find if you search on Visio on Microsoft.com that you will get information related to Visio for your locale. It does vary to a certain extent. I'm based in the UK, although much of the work that I do on this course will be using the US locale. But this is the UK Visio homepage. You can see the Visio Professional 2013 panel there. I'll come back to that a little bit later on and you can see links to various other pieces of information. Now the likelihood is that by the time you come to use this course this page may well have changed but it's pretty certain that there will be an equivalent page available and the first thing I want to do is to go to a link that probably says something like compared products or might say compare editions there's the link there for me compare products and somewhere within that site you will see a list of the three Visio products. Now Visio Standard is basic Visio, it's a great product, but it doesn't quite have the power of Visio Professional. And in turn there is another product, Visio Pro for Office 365, that has additional functionality related to the use of Office 365. Now I'm going to be using Visio Professional on this course so that is basically the most powerful of the desktop based versions of Visio. I will talk a little about the other two products as we go along but the important thing here is to just take a quick look down the list of capabilities. The list isn't very detailed but you get the impression that you can do almost nothing in Visio Standard. Very few of the little circles are ticked there but that's a rather unbalanced list and if you really want a pretty good basic drawing tool there's absolutely nothing wrong with Visio Standard at all. The other point to note here although the prices are in pounds you can see that uh, Visio is not a cheap product and there's quite a bit of difference there in the pricing in the UK and it's an equivalent sort of difference in the US between Visio Standard and Visio Professional. So if you haven't actually got a copy of Visio yet and you're just thinking of buying it I suggest you work through as much of this course as you can and really work out whether you need Visio Professional rather than Visio Standard. You may also of course come to the conclusion that you need Visio Pro for Office 365 but more on that later. Now, you may say, well, how can I work through the course if I haven't got Visio? Well, you can actually get yourself a free trial copy. Now, I can't guarantee that this offer will still be available when you follow this course, but it usually is. So let's go back to that Visio professional panel that I mentioned earlier and click on Try Now. 
And what you'll see there is that there is a trial offer, Visio Professional 2013. You will need a Microsoft account. You'll need to register to get the trial copy. It's a 60-day trial. If you've got the time, you should be able to work through this course, or most of it anyway, in 60 days. Now, there are various links on this page. There's description about Visio 2013 pre-install information, you will need to check the system requirements to make sure that your system is capable of running Visio 2013. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But basically you can download a trial version, use it for 60 days, and then on the basis of that you may decide whether you want to continue using Visio. Of course you can buy Visio from Microsoft from the store online or of course your local computer dealer or another online source whose name I won't mention usually can supply you with a copy of Visio as well so I'll leave it up to you to make sure you've got a copy either a trial version or a bought version will be fine you'll be in the best situation if you're using Visio Professional but if you've already got Visio Standard installed you're really not going to have an awful lot of problem following this course there are a few things you won't be able to do but most of it will be absolutely fine now I mentioned just now that a lot of the information that's useful when you're getting started with Visio 2013 is on Microsoft.com and I suggest that you follow a couple of these links particularly if you're new to Visio but even if you're an experienced user one or two of these pages are going to be useful to you now one way of getting to these links is from the trial page even if you're not taking the trial there is a link to the product details page if you click on that it takes you through to a page that currently says Visio Top Features. It gives you a certain amount of fairly general overall information about Visio. But again, if you scroll down towards the bottom, there's another link there. Learn about what's new in Visio with a quick video. Now, if you'd not used Visio before, learning what's new maybe won't mean an awful lot to you. But if you have, I suggest you have a look at this What's New in Visio video. And there's also a list of the main new features there as well, compared to the previous version, Visio 2010. If you go through that list, you'll see that there are an awful lot of additions. Now, most of these we're going to be covering on the course. One or two of them are a little bit specialised, so I won't be covering absolutely everything, but most things I will. And the sort of things that are particularly interesting and useful are the collaboration and co-authoring features, but also, as we go towards the bottom, there's a lot of support for touchscreen use. So Visio is very much moving into the realm of being used on portable devices now as well. Now that doesn't mean to say that it's always a particularly good tool to use on portable devices, particularly if you're drawing very detailed, very technical diagrams, but the capabilities are very interesting with touch and I'll be covering those on the course as well. Now I've gone back to that previous page again. There are two or three links there. For instance, one here that says get a quick tutorial on how to get started with Visio. One below that, learn how to co-author and collaborate on diagrams. And as an example, create an organization chart. Generally speaking, the information on Microsoft.com and these tutorials tends to be less detailed than the coverage that I provide. But it's a very important and interesting and useful alternative presentation. And you are, you might say, getting it from the horse's mouth from Microsoft as well. And as we'll see when we look at Visio Help later on, there are quite a lot of links through to tutorial information, help and so on. So please try to find the time to follow up as many of those links as you can and take a look at the Microsoft, if you like, the official help and tutorial information. Now, I mentioned just now Visio system requirements. At the moment, these are documented on the Visio FAQ page. Again, well worth looking through the Visio FAQ. What are the system requirements for Visio? There's a list of the system requirements. If you don't already have Visio installed and running and you want to make sure that the device you're intending to use is capable of running Visio, there you are. And if you really want to immerse yourself in Visio and keep up to date with what's happening, why not try the Visio blog, also recommended. Now, one other thing I need to talk about here is who this course is for. Really, I'm thinking in terms of three groups of users. I'm thinking of experienced Visio users, even users who've used Visio 2010, 
and you're really looking for an update. You want to find out what's new in Visio 2013. Well, it's really not practical to just have, say, a couple of sections where I only go over the what's new things because really they need to be dealt with in context. So the what's new information is distributed, hopefully sensibly, throughout the course. That may mean, if you are an experienced Visio 2010 user, that you're going to find a few sections that you can skip. And as far as possible, I'll try to sort of highlight the new features and that may help you to just concentrate on the sections where the new material is included. The second group of users are the people who've perhaps used Visio a little, perhaps quite an old version, or maybe not used it at all, but you're very familiar with Office products in general, so you understand things like how the ribbon works, and to some extent how Microsoft Office products interact with each other. Now, even if you've used an old version of Visio, there have been so many changes in recent versions that almost everything on the course you're going to need to cover. There may be a few sections, some of the basic sections, or maybe a couple of the early sections on doing very simple diagrams where you can skip them or you can go through them very quickly. But I do think you'll find that most of the course you need to cover. The third group of users are the people who maybe haven't even used Microsoft Office products before or have only used old versions in a very limited kind of way. Maybe you're coming to a PC, you've been told you need to learn how to use Visio to draw diagrams related to work, and you're pretty much starting from scratch. Now, I'm going to assume that you know how to use Windows software in fairly general terms, but I will also spend a little bit of time talking about the ribbon, and specifically the ribbon in relation to Visio, for example. So the third group of people, the sort of Visio newcomers, you really need to cover everything on the course. Start at the beginning, work through in sequence. Now the final thing I'd like to talk about in this introductory section is the structure of the course itself. It's set out in what I hope is a logical sequence. I don't cover all of everything in one go. I'm going to build things up in layers, add new features as we go. We'll gradually draw more and more sophisticated and complex diagrams and we'll introduce the integration and interaction features as we go along. I'm also providing you with two sets of files. I'll show you those later on, not in this section. One set of files is the set of files that are the files that I use or create on the course. So that if you want to work along with me, compare what you've done with what I've done, uh, then they're the course files, the sample files. The second group are what I call the exercise files. I'm going to be setting you around about 10 exercises during the course. And for each of those, I'm going to ask you to produce a diagram or produce some aspect of a Visio diagram or interaction. And really, the exercise files are my sort of sample answers to those. They may not be quite the same as yours. Yours may be better, for example, in some cases, or even occasionally mine may be better. But your answer and my answer should share something in common, and that is that they both do what they're supposed to do for that particular exercise. Now, I'll tell you more about the course files and the exercise files as we work through. So that's the end of this introductory section. I've just run my copy of Visio. This is what I see when I start up Visio on my system. You should have access to Visio 2013 now, or you should have bought or downloaded a trial version of Visio. Installation instructions are courtesy of Microsoft.com, but however you've got Visio, whether it's your own copy or you're using somebody else's, you should be able to start it up and you should see a screen which has some resemblance, some similarities with this one. This will be our starting point for the next section. I'll see you then. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to the Simon Says It channel here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button right over there. If you're interested in taking your Office 2013 training to the next level, you can get over 70 hours of Microsoft Office 2013 training offered by Simon Says It. Just check out the About section below this video with more details. We'll see you next week with additional videos.